Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault, and once again, it is Sunday. And that means it's time for the Texas Gun Vault poll question of the week. This is a weekly segment where I ask you guys, as my viewers and subscribers, about something that deals with guns, gun culture, or current events that I want your thoughts and opinions on. This week's question deals with the NFA eForm system, which actually, as of me recording this video right now, the site is down because they are upgrading it. They're going away from that old antiquated 1990s technology and supposedly upgrading it to something that's modern where we can get all of the forms, including eForm 4s back online. Ostensibly, this is supposed to cut down on wait times, but not everybody's very optimistic about this. So I wanted to find out what you guys think. So with that said, Let's dive right into this week's poll question. The ATF made a huge announcement this week about the implementation of a modernized eForm system that will, most importantly, include eForm 4s and the ability for users to upload and submit fingerprints digitally. This is a much needed and long overdue upgrade to their old antiquated system. With a new system in place that is designed to bring wait times down to weeks instead of months, will this new system encourage, discourage, or not change your mind about buying and building NFA-regulated firearms and silencers in the future? So one of the things when it comes to NFA items, such as this right here, this is a rugged Obsidian 9 here on my FN509 Tactical and Flat Dark Earth What? a really cool package. I remember having to wait a long time on this thing. And it has to do just with the fact that the NFA branch of the ATF is very understaffed and it takes them forever to go through all of the paperwork. Now, some people think this is not a bug, but it's a feature of the system. It's meant to slow you down from building and transferring NFA firearms, which most likely many politicians don't want you to have, but they are legal and they can't stop you, with the exception of just slowing the whole thing down. In the last couple of years, when it came to the beer bug or the pandemic, there are rumors that the NFA branch is running very understaffed, sometimes seven or 10 examiners, where really they should probably have about 50 or 60 to get through the mountain of paperwork that they have. Now, if you are building things like SBRs or silencers, there is an e-form system already where you can submit a Form 1, which is an application to make an NFA item. These are actually being filled out and submitted and approved in less than 15 days. That's amazing, and it shows how an e-form system could transform everything. It's the Form 4s that are taking forever. I currently have four Form 4s in processing. I'm just waiting on those to get approved, and they're in various states of how long they were submitted but it looks like my wait's going to be even longer. It's crazy to have to wait a year to pick up an item that you bought, already paid the tax on, just to get a little form back in the mail. Now over time, a lot of people were telling me they're not gonna buy NFA items for a number of different reasons, and sometimes the main reason is the wait times but this is supposed to bring them down. So I was curious, is this gonna change your mind about this, especially if you're one of those NFA fence sitters? Well, let's find out what you guys had to say with this week's results. With over 1,000 votes as of me recording this video, we have, I am excited. I will now buy more or buy my first NFA item, 38%. I am excited, but still feel like the wait times will be too long, 19%. This has not changed my mind and or I still do not care about NFA, 21%. I am discouraged. The government will find a way to mess it up, 16%. And something else, explain in the comments, 5%. This week's results really seem to be very mixed. I was kind of expecting one or two to get the majority, and here it's kind of even. So I don't really think that many people are that excited about the e-form system. I am cautiously optimistic personally. 
Only because I have seen how the eForm system on the Form 1s has actually been pretty darn beneficial, even though the system seems like it runs on a potato because it is that old and obsolete. But let's go through each one of these and I'll give you guys my opinions on them. First off, we have I am excited. I will now buy more or buy my first NFA item. And I'm glad that this one got the majority, 38%. I know many people that are already in the silencer world are already excited and waiting for the eForm system to come up. And they're going to buy a whole bunch of suppressors immediately, thinking they're going to get those 15 or 30 day waits. And I personally think that's not going to be the case. We all know how the government cannot set up even the most basic of things. They can't keep the potholes filled in the road. So when it comes to these websites, we all know it's going to crash on day one. Now, will the system eventually work? Yeah, it probably will. Is it gonna be that fast and efficient? Probably not, because they're still gonna have the same number of examiners going through the same number of forms. Yeah, it will be in an e-form system, so you don't have to worry about the mail or sending in a check or a money order and waiting for that to be cashed. All of that will be instant, because trust me, the government wants their money. That part of the system, I'm 100% sure, is gonna work perfect all the time. But when it comes to the processing, now they're gonna have a huge flood of people that are already excited, that are probably gonna buy five, six, seven, eight, nine suppressors or SBRs or short-barreled shotguns or whatever immediately. It's just going to flood the system. And you're probably going to see wait times just as long as they are. Yeah, maybe in the first couple weeks, you'll get those prototype and the tests go through where some people will say, I submitted it and within two days, I already had my approval. And then all of a sudden, you're gonna see all of the weights jump back up probably to six, seven, eight, or nine months. Now, in a few years, when everyone gets used to this and the novelty of the eForm system wears off, yeah, you might see processing times come back down. I'm gonna estimate three to six months, probably on average for a Form 4. But I am excited that more people are going to get into the NFA world, and here's why. We all know the Supreme Court cases, especially the Heller case, where they mentioned that things that are in common use cannot have de facto bans. And if silencers, short barreled rifles, and short barreled shotguns are in common use because so many people have them, well, getting a ban of those things through is gonna be much more difficult. So the more people that have them, the better for us in the fight to repeal the NFA in the long run. Then we have, I'm excited, but still feel like the wait times will be too long. This is probably where I would have voted. As I said, I am cautiously optimistic. I think the system's definitely going to be better after they get all the bugs and the kinks worked out, after probably about six months. But after that, I'm sure things will still run smoothly. Which, by the way, in case you're wondering, you will still be able to submit paper forms. So who knows, in the future, when all of these silencers are being transferred to the e-form system, in the future, the paper forms might actually be the way to go because the e-form system will be so inundated. Then we have, this has not changed my mind and or I still do not care about NFA. I know that a lot of people in the comments were saying, well, I live in California, I live in New York, I live in New Jersey, this doesn't affect me at all. And trust me, I feel your pain and I am so sorry. But there are a lot of other states, I believe there's 42 states right now that allow NFA items to some degree. And so that's a lot of people. And as I tell people all the time, and this is not to be insensitive, if you don't like where you live, you can move. I know in my own personal life, I've been in job situations that I was not happy with. I felt that the people that I was surrounded with were not positive. I felt that I was not part of a team. And yes, having to resign and go find another job is difficult. It made me anxious. I worried, but I knew it was the best thing in the long run. Now, I understand that some people are tied down to their families there in New York, New Jersey, California, you know, the usual suspects, and they say, I can't move. Well, get a plan now. Move away from those places. Unfortunately, the battle to overturn the NFA bans in those states is such an uphill battle. It's not going to be won this year. It's not going to be won in five years or maybe not even be won in your lifetime. So if you truly do want to own these things, you do have options. It just depends on how much you want it. Look at the most successful people in the world. They're willing to sacrifice anything 
to get what they want. If you hate living in California, and I'm not saying you shouldn't fight in California, I'm not saying you shouldn't stay in California, but if you truly want something and want to make your life better, you know what you have to do. Go to a place that's more friendly to your political beliefs. I'm not trying to be insensitive, I'm just trying to be realistic. Then we have, I am discouraged. The government will find a way to mess it up. 16%. That's actually a lot. I kind of expected that one to get a little bit more. But as I said, they can't even fill the potholes. And we all know how government websites run. It's amazing how certain websites, especially where the government has to collect money, man, they work great. But when it comes to them actually processing things for you, take a look at your local DMV and you know exactly what I'm talking about. You need your driver's licenses, but they will make sure it takes you forever and it's the most difficult process and there's a line out the door. You would think, hey, government officials, maybe you should build more of these DMVs and hire more people. No, they're not going to do that because that's a service. They're going to spend as little on that as possible. But when it comes to collecting your property taxes, trust me, they have a ton of people that are ready to process that for you, right? And then finally, we have something else Explain in the comments. Now, the majority of the people that I think voted for this all had one comment, and that is the NFA is unconstitutional. Free men don't ask for permission. And I can tell you, as a diehard libertarian, I completely agree. However, I don't think that you win many battles by fighting it this way. You know, one of the political commentators that I like to watch is Tim Poole. He's kind of a younger libertarian. He says he's center of the road, but I really think he's libertarian. And I line up with a lot of the things that he says. And he is a big, staunch Second Amendment supporter. And he made a really interesting analogy about the legalization of drugs and the Second Amendment. He says, if you look back in the last 30 or 40 years, look at all the states now that have legalized drugs to some degree, especially marijuana, or they've decriminalized it. Why have they done that? Well, it's because the people that wanted recreational pot or weed or whatever were willing to go to jail for it. They were willing to fight. They were willing to stand up. They were willing to show in public they will be defiant. But when it comes to the Second Amendment, well, many times people that like to exercise their Second Amendment, especially when it comes to expensive things that are usually NFA related, well, you got a lot to lose. And a lot of times people aren't willing to make those stands. They're willing to get online and be keyboard warriors and say, free men don't ask for permission. And who knows, maybe in the comfort of their own home, they're making illegal silencers and short barreled rifles. I have no idea. And that's fine, but I want to see the NFA repealed. And I don't think outside of mass non-compliance that we just flaunt it, it's not going to happen. So my personal belief is you've got to be strategic about it. You don't win wars all the time by just going out there and sending as many troops as you can to die in the trenches. You have to think about the battles and the wars before they are fought. As Sun Tzu said in The Art of War, all battles are won and lost before they are fought. And I personally think that all of us going out there and buying and making as many NFA items legally as possible, it shows a huge F you to the politicians and that we're saying we like these things, these things are in common use and come and take them, try to ban them because it makes it politically infeasible to do so in the future. And then once so many are in circulation, silencers, short barreled rifles, short barreled shotguns, and all of the registered transferable machine guns, and virtually no crime is committed by these, well, where's gonna be the political justification to ban them? Where's the political justification to confiscate them? Well. It's not going to happen because there's going to be so many in circulation. And because you have followed the law. Now, I am not saying that the laws are just. I believe these laws are unconstitutional. But you use the system to change the system. And that's what I think the best course of action is for us. Go out and buy them. Pay your taxes now on these things. I don't think we should pay a $200 tax. I'm completely against it. But right now, that's the construct in the world that we live in. We need to fight to change it. And if you truly want to change it, vote for the people. Stand up 
for the people and the politicians that are gonna fight for you. Don't vote for these establishment politicians. Just don't vote for a Republican just because they're a Republican. Many times they're gonna sell you out just as much as the Democrats. Vote for the people that are going to fight for you. Go to the gun rallies, donate your money to the causes and the organizations that are fighting these battles in court. Yes, we may lose. But if you're not willing to fight more than just be a keyboard warrior, nothing is going to change. And so that's my thoughts on all of those options. So now let's see what you guys have to say with the top rated comments of the week. And our top rated comment of the week comes from Urian Dill who says, I find it highly unlikely this will significantly reduce processing time, maybe 10 months into nine months, but anyone is crazy to think this will bring wait times down to single digit weeks. Wait times are likely intentionally delayed to slow the receipt of NFA item to purchaser. Purposeful tactic in my opinion, we can hope, but I'm not optimistic. And as I said, there is not a bug in the system. It is a feature for the politicians. If they could make it five years, 10 years, they would do it. They want to make sure you are maybe even deceased before you're even able to pick up your NFA item. After all, you could have a huge gun collection of hundreds of pistols, hundreds of long guns, but you have to wait a long time to get that silencer because it is so, so dangerous. Then we have the Marine Accountant who says, as much as I want to get excited, I'm not excited because it's still all really expensive. I currently have silencers and SBR, so I'm not a hater. What I really expect to happen is the system to go down in a week because it gets overloaded. It's a great step in the right direction though. And I really agree with that comment completely. It's going to go down because so many people are going to flood the system. It's just like when they announced the Russian ammo ban. Everyone went out and bought as much Russian ammo as they possibly could. And you couldn't find any on the shelves. I can actually go to the local gun stores now and find it because those import contracts are still good. But in that initial week, the run was crazy. And that's what's gonna happen with this e-form system. Then we have Tech for All says, should it need to pay or file for a short barrel or a suppressor? It's insanity. I don't even think you should have to for machine guns, but that's just a losing argument, unfortunately. And I do agree with them. I personally believe that we should be able to get machine guns off the registry and open up new ones for civilian ownership. I've talked about this in the past where I've made videos on the Hughes Amendment, which banned machine guns, anything post May 19th, 1986, for any new machine guns to be transferred to civilians. I always say, we're not going to get the NFA completely gone away in one night or abolished in any way, but we have to take certain things away from it. I think silencers and short barrel rifles are the low hanging fruit. I think machine guns will forever be part of some type of regulatory scheme. And it's funny, I've actually talked to people, I said, hey, would you take some type of grand compromise and that we get rid of silencers and SBRs off of the NFA and in return, we keep machine guns as they are. They go, no, it's all or nothing. I'm like, well, that's why you're going to lose. You have to piecemeal it. You have to be able to compromise. And by compromise means we give up something and they give up something. Then we have Harley Walker. If it works, I'm glad it could reduce wait times. I have bought quite a few suppressors and still plan on getting a couple more. So if e-forms work, great. If not, I'll submit paper forms and wait. Just like tens of thousands are right now. Screw the NFA and the ATF. And let's go Brandon. And there you go. I agree with that too. I think he's kind of cautiously optimistic. If it works, it works great. But I'm not crossing my fingers. And then finally we have Mark Robinson who says, I regularly get NFA items from silencers to SBRs, but this change will make me probably hop on more silencers since the wait times will be decreased. And if the wait times truly are decreased, I'm probably going to do the exact same thing right now. It honestly sucks having four stamps out there for really cool BNT suppressors that I might not see for almost another year. It really does suck. I've already paid the tax. I've already bought the suppressors and I have to wait and it sucks. We only have so much time on this earth and I want these items to enjoy. 
I'm a lawful gun owner. I'm a citizen that doesn't break the law. I want my lawful product and I can't have it. But if this helps us get these a little bit faster, well, then great, but I'm not holding my breath, but who knows, I could be wrong. We just have to wait and see. So there you go. That is the Texas Gun Vault poll question of the week. I'm curious to see what you guys think about my thoughts on all of this. And if you want to participate in next week's poll, please go to the community tab of my YouTube channel. I will also put a link in the description below. Go over there, see what next week's poll is. Vote, comment, and like other people's comments so we can get the top rated comments of the week. Another thing I want to invite you to do is go over to the Texas Gun Vault 2. There is a link in the description below as well. It's kind of my second channel. It's a behind the scenes casual channel where I talk about things that I can't always flush out here on the full channel or I'm just making videos for what I refer to as my biggest fans. I really don't have fans, but the people that want to follow me over there, it's a completely different type of channel. It's all about guns, but it's not as focused as this channel is. So I want to invite you and welcome you guys over there. I'd like to get to a thousand subscribers over there so I can integrate the two channels. It's just how YouTube works. So there you go. The Texas Gun Vault poll question of the week. I always enjoy hearing all of your responses and what you guys have to say. So let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.